Uh, is this? <laughs> is this? Is this what it's supposed to sound like? Is this sound design? Wait, is this? There's no way this is right. No. Crush 40 wouldn't make this. What's up everyone, Michael here with a PC overview for Team Sonic Racing, which is basically the Sega and All-Stars Racing games, but like it's all Sonic. It has a lot of the same mechanics, but it's technically not a sequel, and it has a lot of its own mechanics that are really incredibly interesting, and I'm really enjoying this one. I'll talk about my impressions on the game a little bit later. I've been playing it for a few hours. Not quite enough to have a full review, but I'm, I really enjoy this game, so I strongly recommend it so far. But today we're going to be mostly talking about the PC performance, and so far, the PC port is actually pretty dang good. It's got a lot of high quality stuff in it. It does have some stuff that could be higher quality, as in graphically speaking. But for the most part, it performs fairly dang well outside of some loading stutter here and there when it gets into actually loading into the track and the intro things that slide in. I'll probably put it before I even get to this part of the video. I'll probably put it in because it's kind of hilarious, but the audio plays too quickly. But those are the only two issues I found and the intro bug, it doesn't affect gameplay. And when you're loading into the track, it has a small little cutscene thing. So that loading stutter actually doesn't affect the gameplay itself, which was a pretty nice solution from them. So yeah, PC port. Pretty dang good so far, and the PC version runs pretty dang flawlessly on mid to high-end hardware. If you're on a low-end machine, you'll probably have some issues, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, when it comes down to my actual impressions of the game, I'll get more in-depth a little bit later near the end of the video, but so far, I was started out being skeptical because I was like, oh man, it's kind of unfortunate they removed all this type of stuff from the actual Transformed, or Sega and All-Stars Transformed, and I was kind of like disappointed. I was like, oh man, I missed the plans, I missed the boats, but after I've been playing for a while, this is easily my favorite kart racer so far. It is really, really freaking fun. And although there are some hiccups here and there design-wise when it comes down to the tracks, the tracks are extremely varied. It's all Sonic themed and they did a fantastic job with that. And the team aspects of the game actually makes the gameplay really, really interesting and really, really fun and frantic. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And graphically speaking, it looks really good. The music is absolutely fantastic. And the atmosphere that the game gives off is really, really good. The story isn't quite that great, but I wasn't expecting a story to begin with, so I'm not really too complaining about that. But I strongly recommend it so far. I'm only a few hours in. I think I have four hours of gameplay on it so far, so I'm not that far into the game, and it's not enough to give a complete review. I will have a review coming in the next few weeks, but I'll give a little bit more of my impression stuff later in the video. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about PC performance stuff. Now, I did mention low-end machines might have an issue running this game. Now, if we go ahead and skip over to advanced real quick, we'll go back in a second. But if we skip over here, there's not a whole lot you can customize, and a lot of people on low-end hardware, they're finding that this game does have presets, as you can see, low, medium, and high and that kind of isn't getting set properly depending on your machine. Mine didn't set to the proper resolution either, but it did set my resolution or my display settings to high. Some people are running like GTX 1050, for example, is setting it automatically to high. However, you do need to drop the settings to run it on that machine. And so keep that in mind. Some people on integrator graphics just can't run the game at all. So basically if you're running on a low end machine, don't expect the game to run perfectly fine for you, but if you're on mid to high end hardware, I've heard very, very little issues. There's some specific issues such as audio glitches depending on your hardware, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Anyways, controls. We can actually rebind absolutely everything for each controller specifically. So you have your gamepad vibration, so you can turn that on and off, which is super nice. And you actually have some presets here, one or two presets, and you can absolutely customize absolutely every single button, which is super, super nice and you get four customization slots. So, you know, one customization slot for each player, which is super, super cool for a game like this. If you want every single player that wants a different control scheme, you could do that. The controls aren't all that complicated, so it's not really that big of a deal, but that's absolutely super nice to see in this game, and that's super, super cool. Same thing with the keyboard as well. So if I go in here, you can customize it, and you can rebind absolutely everything. So if I want to accelerate, for example, to be the F key, Boom, it can be an F1 or F3 to accelerate or whatever, or even the numpad. I can even use tab or caps lock or whatever, and I can use insert, delete, it can use any sort of key. Now there is some conflict here. You can't use escape because escape is the default escape key, but if you use enter or something like that, then it can actually screw up and just kind of mix up some of your commands. So there are certain keys you want to watch out for, which I wish it kind of did here, but for the most part, it doesn't affect the gameplay, it just affects menu navigation. So there you go. So yeah, and you can actually use the keyboard as a separate player, but you cannot use the keyboard as multiple players. So if I hit space here, you can see down in the bottom right, moving my mouse here so you can see it, 
it actually bound it to player two. You can't bind multiple players to the keyboard. And if you want to get the player or the keyboard off of a player slot, you have to actually exit all the way back to this menu. I have not found the key binding to make them not a player. On the key or on the gamepad, it's just the back button. But on the keyboard, I haven't found it, so I don't know where it's at. It's probably there somewhere and I just don't know it, but there you go. And that's controls. So audio, multiple volume sliders, which is super, super nice. You can also turn off the in-game comms. Characters are constantly talking about what they're doing and like when they get hit, they make little quips. I personally like it because I like the little quips and it does give you some gameplay information as well about what's going on. But you can turn it to text only if you want that or you can just completely disable if you don't like it. Audio language, you get a nice selection here, including English and Japanese. You also get the video settings as well, which you get the gamma and controls. You get your tutorials, which are just little tiny props that show up. They also show up in the loading screen. So I just have them on so you can read them if you want. Um, they're not too intrusive, so I don't really care. Display selection, which display you want it on. So you can see my second monitor here, windowed full screen and borderless as you would expect. And they perform as you would expect. My only issue is full screen doesn't seem to cap the frame rate properly. It was running at 140 Hertz for me when I'm running on a 60 Hertz monitor. So that was a little bit unfortunate. So I ended up, you know, just going to windowed borderless. I also have VSync on because the game was tearing because it wasn't capping it properly. But when you're actually running with VSync on, it seems to cap it perfectly fine. And then winded mode doesn't seem to be rescalable, but I don't think that's too big of an issue. It just goes to whatever display resolution you set. And then display resolution, you actually get a nice selection of resolutions and it will do black bars. Okay, it renders properly if you have your monitor set properly, of course. And you can even go all the way down to like a, you know, four by three or whatever if you really, really want to. So you can basically use any resolution. It does go higher if you have a higher resolution monitor. That's just what resolution of my current monitor. And then you have VSync on, which the game likes to tear if you're on full screen, but otherwise it's not that big of a deal, to be honest, if you're okay with tearing. And then you get your text language. So yes, you actually do have a text language option as well as the voice language, and you get a few extra ones such as the Chinese podisk and whatever the heck that is. I think that's Russian. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a, I'm a stupid American. I don't know all the languages. Now we get into the advanced settings. Now, my main complaint here is I wish it told us a little bit more about what these options are. You did get a few presets, so if you just want to use a preset, there you go. You got low, medium, and high. Low end hardware, medium, high, not hardware, high end hardware, but there you go. Actually, if you're on medium and high end hardware, you should be able to run it on high. The game's not too demanding. And then you get custom as well, which I'm running on. And I have everything maxed, so you have anti-aliasing. It doesn't tell us what it is. It makes the screen a little bit blurry, so I assume it's probably FXAA. But it actually looks kind of nice, because the game being a little bit blurred actually isn't a bad thing. I'll talk about that when we get into gameplay. But it's it's a very fast game, and there's actually stuff like boost blurred, where it blurs everything on the out edge, and it has like motion blur and stuff like that. You can actually disable it if you want, but it actually looks really, really good. So even though we don't have a lot of options here, on max quality, it actually looks pretty decent. There are some stuff that I would, you know, rather, you know, see what it means. Like, what is this ambient inclusion? How, what is the quality? And if we have had more options to this to like scale it up or down that would have been nice and i really wish that there would have been higher quality options for stuff like ambient inclusion or shadow quality especially again i'll talk about that when we get into gameplay but there's low medium and high for the model quality shadow quality texture filtering actually tells us what it is which is kind of nice and then texture quality we have no idea what it is so that's just a little bit of a nitpick complaint but it would have been nice if it would have actually told us what those were but there you go and when we actually get into the performance of the game, I do want to reiterate that I've had no problems with performance in this game, aside from one, the bug in the intro screen, which I'm sure I've already put in the video by this point, and the fact of the loading stutter when you get into a map, which we'll see that in a second. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go into the main thing. And my first complaint about quality is you'll notice here that the UI, actually you probably won't notice on YouTube because the game was designed for 1920 by 1080, but on my larger monitor, the images are a little bit artifacted and kind of look a little blurry. And this is a problem because it's not only in the menus, but when we actually get into the story aspects of the game, this doesn't actually apply to the in-game menus. I'll talk about that when we get into it. But here's character selection and stuff like that. All the characters look a little bit blurry and artifacted because they're just not high enough quality for a 2560 by 1440 monitor and this is going to be you know even more exaggerated when you get into higher qualities um, or higher resolutions and that's a little bit annoying when we actually get into it um yeah so there we go and when it actually goes into the story aspects of the game, here's the story aspects. It's kind of like a VN thing to where they show up, they have little text bubbles and they talk and stuff and they have these pre-rendered kind of images on the side and again this kind of looks blurry on my monitor and I wish they would have gone either a different route by using like 3D models or something or maybe just made them a little bit higher quality but it's a little bit unfortunate because it just makes these scenes a little bit blurry and that's kind of why I'm mostly complaining about it. For the most part though, it's not that big of a complaint. It's just like, oh yeah, the like UI is a little bit blurry because when you get into the actual gameplay, the critical stuff is actually scaled. So for example, you'll notice in the bottom left that the A press A to continue isn't filling that entire box. If you're on 1920 by 1080, it does. Certain things do scale with your resolution. So if I go over in here, 
it's all loading stutter a little bit. Now, one thing I should mention here is that, um, oh, I forgot to do the power boost because I was looking at my uh, stats over here. Um, one thing to mention though, real quick, is that I am currently recording, which ends up having some issues with this game. My hard drive isn't fast enough to record at the moment. And so it's kind of like, you know, having issues with this game because it's so freaking colorful. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, so yeah, normally when I'm actually in gameplay, I don't really run into all that much stutter. So do keep that in mind. The footage will have some a little bit of stutter just because of my capture software, but the game itself doesn't actually stutter all that much. Um, but yeah, so basically when it comes down to the actual UI of the game, however, it does scale based on your resolution. So it doesn't actually upscale the images. So they're actually crisp and clean and very easy to read. So stuff like when there's button prompts, it will look really, really small on my screen because, you know, I'm at a higher resolution. Some people would prefer if it scaled, but stuff like, you know, up in the top right and the bottom corners or whatever, that stuff isn't scaled with your resolution, which is both a good thing because it looks nice, crisp and clean and easy to read, but it also ends up running into a problem to where basically the game kind of can have really small UI elements on larger resolutions, which is kind of a complaint when it comes down to higher resolution support. It's not too big of a deal in my opinion for so far that I've been playing, but it can be a little bit annoying. And as you saw, the Y button at the bottom of the screen there was just really, really tiny. Also, I'm not playing particularly well because this game is kind of hard to focus on and play at the same time. Apologies for that. Um, but yeah, so Talking about the actual quality of the like actual visuals, however, the game looks gorgeous and it is no doubt the PC version is the best version of the game or best looking version of the game. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's extremely colorful. The actual shadow scaling and everything is really, really well done. The effects from driving, the model quality is really, really high. There's a high polygon count on everything and it just looks pretty and really, really fun to play. And as I was talking about in the settings screen, the actual visual effects are really really well done and the actual like blur and stuff like that just looks appropriate for the game and it just looks really really good and really really solid and that's really mostly what i could say about it there's some hiccups here and there there's certain things that could be a higher resolution i do wish we could have higher resolution shadows especially with draw distance you'll notice that some things are kind of popping into the background but again because you're moving so quickly and running through things so fast you don't really notice it all that much and it's not really that big and it probably helps performance quite a bit as well which is probably a big key factor into the reason why it's doing that and again with the pre-rendered stuff again it looks blurry on my screen i'm sure it won't show up in the video because again the video is going to be a 1920 by 1080 because my recording software is already having issues at the moment but there you go and so yeah most of the game looks absolutely fantastic and it runs pretty well oops i didn't mean to re-race that whoops i wanted to go somewhere else no so yeah, the PC port so far is pretty dang good, actually. So yeah, I would I would actually strongly recommend the PC version of the game if you already want the game. Now talking about my actual impressions of the game itself, I freaking love the game so far. Like I actually like this game quite a hell of a lot. Like it is actually incredibly fun. Now I've been playing it nonstop since I bought it. I, I bought it and had to wait a little bit to actually play it because I had stuff to do in the day and everything, but I was looking forward to trying it out because I've been looking forward to this game. You know, I, I really like Sonic games and everything, so obviously I'm going to pick it up, and I really like kart racers, and the Sonic kart racing games have always been to my wheelhouse, and I've always really, really enjoyed them. And this one is easily the best one in, in case of a kart racer, I should say. As in, Transformed has a lot of unique ideas, and I don't think this game is going to replace it necessarily. Transformed is technically a Sonic or Sega and All-Stars racing game, and this one is a Sonic racing game, and there is sort of a distinction there, and it is its own game and experience. And I think that's a good thing, because if it was just Transformed but, like, better... I think that less people would enjoy it as much because basically it would be like, oh, you're playing the same game, except it's like, you know, new and better and everything like that, which I'm sure some people wanted. I definitely would have wanted that because I definitely would have liked more Transform because Transformed is still a great game. But this game actually introduces its own ideas in a lot of really interesting ways. The team aspects of the game makes it so that obviously I'm not doing one right now, but the team aspects of the game makes it so that there's constantly a competition. There's a ton of catch up mechanics that I've never seen in any other racing game ever created ever. And it's actually really, really fun and interesting. You can trade items. You can end up making yourself like when you're in first, you end up having a little trail behind you that you can end up using to kind of speed up and catch up. And enemy teams can use what they call slingshotting, which is basically trailing behind other um, teammates to end up making it so they kind of catch up like incrementally and just kind of get over it 
faster and faster and kind of catch up and make it so that it's always competitive. The items can be swapped between players, so you can be like, oh, hey, here's an item box, and another player could be taking it, and you can end up powering up each other's item boxes as well. And I did terrible there. I was just showing off one of the challenges. Um, and those sort of aspects are really, really fun. The story is kind of meh so far. I mean, it's a Sonic story. It's obviously a spin-off game. And so when it comes down to that sort of aspect of it, it's going to be a little bit, yeah, not really all that big of a deal. But when it comes down to actually, you know, the actual gameplay itself, it's really, really fun and incredibly entertaining. Like, it's got a lot of really cool stuff that's just all over the place. And there's a nice selection of characters. There's only 15 characters so far. Um, they said they might do future DLC and stuff, which I don't, I don't know about DLC. But the actual content in the game so far, there's quite a bit of it so far. Like, I've been playing through four hours. Now, maybe I'm just saying this because Sonic Forces was only four hours long. <laughs> maybe that's what I'm going on, but... So far, the game has actually been really, really fun, and it's got a lot of really interesting ideas that I think are really, really cool. And I think this would also be a really cool, like, fun party game as well. You can end up getting three or friends and just having, like, a your really fun, like, little party thing. Or you could have your all your friends with, like, different parties and stuff like that, to where it's, like, everyone has, like, two AI companions. It also has online multiplayer. However, the online has had some issues. The online multiplayer, which I forgot to talk about a little bit later earlier, the online multiplayer seems to stutter a lot. It has a lot of weird desync issues to where characters just kind of rubber band all over the place. And it doesn't seem like anybody's there. I think it has region based kind of like matchmaking or something, which is a little bit unfortunate. So that's a little bit of a drag because if you want to have more than four people on one machine, you do need to use the online features or a land feature of some sort. And the game simply doesn't have that, which is a little bit unfortunate. And I don't know if the online community is going to last all that long for this game. Apparently, this game isn't performing particularly well on PC when it comes down to purchasing, which is a little unfortunate because, again, the game's really freaking fun, and I've just wanted to play it nonstop. It's easily my favorite kart racer so far. Now, of course, these are early impressions of the game. The tracks have a lot of variety, and, you know, the actual gameplay itself for the single-player campaign so far has a lot of content and actually has a decent amount of challenge into it and it has a lot of skill ability as well so if like you're really good at the game or whatever you can actually boost up the difficulty but if you're not very good at the game you can also end up using a smaller difficulty and it's really really fast paced and really really fun but i think that a lot of people are kind of held off of it because transformed was actually really really good and this isn't a replacement for that so if you're looking for a transformed replacement this probably won't be it because Transformed had the whole boats and airplanes thing and it had a really good transformation sequence. But this game just is a fantastic kart racer. Some really, really good ideas. And it's got some really good catch up mechanics that just make every single race entertaining and interesting. And there are some rare cases to where, yes, you will get in first and just stay in first, but it always feels like it's because you're doing well rather than some just, you know, fortunate happenings of just a blue shell not smashing into your face. Oh, burn into Mario. Um, so, yeah, basically, it's a fantastic game and I'm enjoying it. And the PC port is pretty dang good. Obviously, while I'm recording, it's hiccuping here and there because it will use your hardware if you have it. It will run the game as pretty as it can if you have the hardware to support it. And lower end machines might have some issues running the game. And I think that's the main issue with it is that lower end hardware may not be able to run the game particularly well. And that has been running into a lot of problems when it comes down to casual players because they might not have the PC to run it. And in that scenario, I might actually have to recommend the console version of the game because the console version of the game might actually be better for people that don't have the PC to run it properly. But if you have a mid to high... Oh man, I hate that one. <laughs> it shocks everyone except for the team that uses it. Um, yeah, the, the abilities are really interesting. But if you are on a lower end PC or whatever, you might want to pick it up on console if you have that option available like PS4 or Xbox One because you might not be able to run the game very well, which is a little unfortunate to say. That said, if you go in the future, obviously PCs scale up. You can end up, you know, using it in the future and it'll end up running fine. But again, you know, it'll be on discount by that point, I'm sure. So yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that it might not work on low-end hardware and the scaling isn't particularly great. And I do wish there was a little bit higher quality in certain cases, such as, you know, higher quality shadows. The dithering on the shadows can be a little bit distracting here and there, or maybe the draw distance and stuff. But the gameplay itself, freaking fun, freaking fantastic. I freaking love it so far. I was skeptical. I was really, really skeptical when I first started playing. The story, especially when it starts out and the fact that the intro was bugged out had me really, really worried for the PC port of the game. But when it comes down to actually playing the game, I've enjoyed it and I just want to keep playing it. I'm really, really excited to like get some friends over and just be like, hey, we're going to do some Sonic racing. Oh, good. That, um, 
that ghost almost screwed me over there. So yeah, I, I'm going to be playing this for a while, and I will have a future full review coming up, so look forward to that. But yeah, overall, it's my favorite kart racer so far, and it's got a lot of really interesting challenges as well. So it's not just normal racing. It's got stuff like, you know, the drift challenges where you got to collect rings. It's got little goalpost things. It's got destruction where there's a bunch of little racers on the map, but then you got to, like, destroy them and stuff in the time limit. So it's got a lot of content and a lot of really interesting things to go through. And there's also customization for the cars as well. Um, I'll go and show that off before I end the video as well. And I actually like the customization as well. So don't take this as like a final verdict review. I will have a review in the next few days or a week or so whenever I end up getting time. But so far, oh my god, I'm loving this game. And I really, really enjoy it. I just wish the story was a little bit better, quite frankly. And I would love to see more characters. Also... Um, one thing to warn about is the progression is based off of this loot box style thing. It's not for purchases. Like, you don't pay real money for it, but the in-game progression is a little bit randomized. Some people have been complaining about this. However, if you use a character a lot, it will end up giving you the items for that character. So, for example, I was playing with Shadow a lot. Now it's giving me a bunch of Shadow items. And so the randomization favors giving you items. Oh, I got a new horn. Um, it favors giving you items for the characters you've been using. So... It's not that bad. So, for example, I had never played as Omega, and so it only gave me, like, one Omega item randomly, but it's been giving me items for characters that I've played. So if you play, like, certain characters, it will just give you those items. So it's not completely random, but it is somewhat random, which is a little bit unfortunate for some people might have a complaint to that. I actually enjoy it after I started messing with it. But here's the customization. We'll just go over this real quick. Um, I got a new part for Rogue, so I may as well look at it. So here we are. Um, now, one complaint about this is the loading transitions are a little bit long. Every time you click on a character, it's like... It's got to do, it's got to do the voice quip and stuff. And the audio quality here and there, the voice acting is all over the place. Um, I'll talk about that in my full review when it comes out. But yeah, you end up doing this. You can customize the actual stats with these items. There's only three customizables per each part, per each car. But they do actually change the way they look. There's also golden parts, which are legendary drops or whatever. Um, they're not hard to get. And then aside from that, you also have the spray paint, which I've customized Sonic quite a bit. But uh, let's just go ahead and look at silver here. Um, yeah, you can end up selecting different colors and stuff like that and you can change color palettes as well So if I want to use the you know a different color palette for him, I can do that So it's an interesting um, Solution to that but you can actually go through you can change the material so it can be like oh I want to make it metal or I want to make it brushed He was a terrible one to go to because his car is just white um, Let's let's do um, We'll do We'll, we'll do that because they're cute um, but yeah, so you can actually change like the material and stuff like that. So it's got some decent customization. You also get decals and vinyls that you unlock through gameplay. And the better you do in the tracks and stuff like that, the more you unlock. So you can actually unlock different stuff. So there you go. You get little stars on it. Oh, they're so cute. Um, yeah. And you can also customize the horn if you want to. So it'll be like... Oh, that was the chat one. I clicked on the chat one twice. What did I unlock? Hold on. I want to see the horn I unlocked. Ah, uh, that's so far down. <laughs> Where is it? I like it. So yeah, that's that's my verdicts of the game so far, and I strongly recommend it so far. Full review, coming in the next few weeks or whatever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry this dragged on a little bit because I just wanted to show off some stuff because I freaking love this game. If you like my styles of content, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this one. And you can also check out my website at michaelpstanage.com, which just got a little tiny bit of an overhaul, so there's some different JavaScript stuff. And I also did a blog post, so you can end up checking my blog post. Um, the current blog post is up. It has a rant about League of Legends, so if you're interested in that, check it out. You can also check out our gaming Discord called The Broken Chat Box. Link in the description. We talk about video games. We have links to news and stuff. And if you want to check out my new releases, I also post them there because YouTube doesn't notify literally anybody. So there you go. And also, if you have any comments or anything or you end up wanting to play the game, do check out our gaming Discord and leave some comments as well. If you end up checking out our gaming Discord, I'm definitely looking for some people to play this online. I would love to get a full party of 12 people to just play this and just see how frantic it is because that probably seems like the best scenario for this game. Unfortunately, it probably won't happen very often, but... It's, it's just a fun game. It's really, really good kart racer, and I'm really looking forward to actually seeing where it goes. Do keep in mind, it is not full price. It is not like a full price release, so some people have been skeptical about it because it's like, ooh, it's not a $60 release, and some people are saying it's not even worth $40, but for me, I have no regrets on my purchase. I really, really enjoy it, and I really do think it's worth that, but again, wait for my full review for like a final verdict or whatever. Just so far, my early impressions of it are really, really good. There's just a few things that could be a little bit higher quality. Also, there's a lot of tracks as well. There's like, um, I think there's three per area and there's five or six areas. So there's quite a lot of tracks as well. And they're all 
unique and different and all have their own mechanics and stuff. So yeah, overall, freaking fantastic game. So excited to play more and I want to be done with this video already, but now I have to edit it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> see you guys in the next video. Okay, I'm lying about the editing part. I'm going to play like seven more races. <laughs>